Hey guys, welcome back to another Jamie Bob video. In this one, we're going to be looking at the Ion Action Sheet, and this is for Ionic 4. We're just going to be going through the docs, seeing what this thing can do, and getting it to work on our own blank site. Very first thing we're going to do is go down here to the usage and just see how they do the most basic example. And then we're going to be configuring it to do like more advanced things than that in a second. But first, let's just get this working. Um, so the first thing that we do is we go over to our code. And it's done from the TypeScript. So um, here in my home page, I'm going to um, paste this, this code and put it in my own method called like um, open action sheet. <clears throat> okay, and I'm just going to format it so it looks nicer. And also, uh, since they're using await here, I'm going to declare this function as async. And that's just because await is an asynchronous function. So anyways, first we need to um, declare a constructor before we can use this variable here. So I'm going to make a constructor and then inject the action sheet controller like this. Action sheet controller. And then press enter to auto import that. And just finish declaring the constructor like that. Now all we really have to do is call this function from like a button. Okay, so I just have a button called open and then I'm gonna register the click event um, to call our function open action sheet. All right, and then with that, I'm gonna go and check out the home page, see what it looks like. We have it open, click it, and it opens the action sheet. And by the way, this is using the MD style so like in the docs it has uh, MD and then there's iOS. Um, the web defaults to MD styling. Um, so let's just have a look at that code once again and just kind of figure out um, how we can change its behavior. So looking at the action sheet, it creates the action sheet using um, the data inside of this um, JSON object. And then the JSON object contains a header. Um, so the header is what we see uh, right here at the very top, it's the header. You can't click on it. It's just for looks. And then we have the buttons, and the buttons is just this big array right here. Uh, each one of the buttons contains um, the text of the button, and then the role. So there are two roles described in the documentation. It's either destructive or cancel. And that just means that they're styled a certain way on iOS. They don't really seem to do anything for Android. So here the, the delete is a destructive role and the cancel is a cancel role and that puts it down here at the bottom and separates it from the other ones but on the uh, MD or the Android style um, it doesn't seem to do anything um, so that's what the role is for and then we're also able to specify an icon and the icons just come from this website right here uh, I think it's ionicons.com and so we can search for trash and then, so that same icon is being used um, right here. It's the same icon. And then, uh, let's see what else we have. We have uh, a handler. So like, this is what happens when you click the button. So this just logs delete clicked. And then uh, we'll see when we click it, it says delete clicked. So you can have it do anything. But in this example, it's just logging things. All right, and then the rest of the buttons are basically the same, just text, icon handler, and then a role if, if necessary. But from the docs, there's additional things we can configure, like the subtitle. So let's try setting that. We just set it on the uh, main object here, like the actual um, root instead of for particular buttons. So I'll just say subtitle right there. And then looks like it's not called subtitle because it's red. Um, Let's see if we can find it. Oh, it's just called subheader. Um, so it looks like the docs are a little out of sync on this one. Um, but let's see what it looks like. All right, so there we go. There's the subtitle. Um, looking good. All right, now scrolling down, there's a bunch of other properties. Um, this one's animated. Uh, let's see how that looks. So we can set it to either true or false. Um, by default, I think it's true because it was animating, if I remember. Yeah, it slides up. So. Let's say animated is going to be false, um, and just see how that looks. Alright, there we go. So no animation. 
Um, I think I like the animated way better, but um, we're just kind of exploring what it can do. Alright, next one is um, Backdrop Dismiss. Um, and I think by default that's true because um, the backdrop was dismissing when I clicked um, the backdrop, it dismissed the alert. So uh, let's, let's put that in and then set it to false and just um, see that behavior. So opening it back up again, um, now if I click on the backdrop, it doesn't work, does not close it. Oh, also remember how I was talking about the iOS versus the MD styling? Um, well, that's just for mobile, but for the web, um, it defaults to MD. It doesn't look like this on the web. Um, I'll show you, it looks, looks like this for both uh, Chrome as well as Safari. But if you wanted to change the behavior, uh, like override it, then you can just uh, go inside of here at the root level and just say mode, and then you can configure either iOS or MD. So if I set this to iOS, then when I open it up, it'll look like the iOS styling instead with the cancel button down here styled specially because of its role cancel and then the delete styled specially as well. Um, and also this is kind of like translucent so it's partially, you can partially see through it. And yeah, that's just this mode section right here described in the docs. So it's either iOS or MD. So if you want to configure that, you can. Um, you can even configure it based on the platform using the Ionic platform plugin. But I'll save the platform plugin for a different video. So for now, let's just continue on um, exploring the Ion Action Sheet. This CSS class is used for like if you want to style um, the alert in a specific way. So like uh, if we set it CSS class to be like um, my alert, and then in the SCSS we select for dot my alert, um, and then set like the background to be like navy. Um, we'll see what that looks like. Um, looks like it wasn't applied. Um, let me just try and figure out why that is. Um, so I'm going to go into the HTML here and search for um, my-alert. Okay, so we found the CSS. Okay, looks like my alert is not part of um, the home module, which makes sense. It's kind of like a more global uh, element. So we would have to take this CSS and instead put it in the global CSS file. And then once we've selected the my alert, we can uh, basically configure at, like any of these custom variables, which are at the bottom of the docs, like background, background activated, color, height, etc. Um, so here I'm just going to set the background and set it to be, um, let's do something kind of lighter like this color. So now when we open it up, um, it'll be that same color. So this is the background. And if we inspect this uh, cancel button right here, um, we'll see that its background color is that of um, background selected. So if we want to change that as well, we can change um, background selected. Um, let's do a slightly different color for that. All right, so there we go. Um, that one's just selected by default for iOS. Anyways, that's how we can configure the colors, just with things like this. As long as the custom CSS class is set, and then in the global CSS, uh, we just set whatever styles we want to set. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for learning about the Action Sheet controller with me. Um, I had fun learning about it too. It's pretty cool stuff. Oh, also be sure to subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.